I love those long introductions. They give me a chance to get really nervous. <laughs> so <laughs> appreciate that there, Pat. <laughs> Um, and anybody who tells you they don't get nervous in front of, sp in, when speaking in front of a crowd, obviously isn't really thinking about what they're speaking about. I certainly do. So forgive me uh, when I s I'll start off with that. Um, <laughs> um, and yeah, that introduction did go. <laughs> anyway, um, let me tell you about Don't Bang on the Bomb, because that's something I love. About I love. It's something I've been working on for hmm, a few years. I think since 2013. And it does a bunch of different things. So I'll tell you a little bit about what it does. And I need you to help me. I get excited. I talk fast. And it's not great for people. If I do that, go like this. Slow me down a bit, OK? And I'll try to do my best. So don't bang the bomb. What do we do? We look at the companies that are connected to the nuclear weapons industry. And in our latest report, we profile 27 of them. I was amazed earlier when I heard about this list of 200 companies. I was like, oh my god, that's so much work attached to the fossil fuel industry. And I was thinking, gosh, you know, we spend several months profiling these 27 where we can put up information about the contracts and the specific components that they make to make nuclear weapons possible, to contribute to the lethality of nuclear weapons. And we're, we do this, there's a lot, there's some companies that are some financial institutions that make their own lists. And we look at those and we share notes with one another whenever we can. Um, we're really excited because this issue is getting more attention. It's getting more traction. And the Global Compact, which was mentioned earlier, is, as of last week, now excluding nuclear weapon producers. There's a couple of companies that are on that global compact list that are getting kicked off. That's awesome. <laughs> and it's a, it's a little win, but wins help us. Every little win builds our energy, builds our campaign. And I like to win. I'm, I'm one of four kids. Winning is important. I like to win. I used to play sports. I believe in winning, and so that's why I like to work on divestment, because yes, it does, it is a long-term commitment, but you can have really powerful short-term wins, and then we celebrate, and celebration is awesome. So I like to win, and it's funny, because sometimes we think we're winning, and then we actually realize we didn't win, and I'll give you an example. Um, there's this company that used to be called Fin Mechanica. It's an Italian company, and it works on missile components for nuclear, nuclear armed missiles. Fin Mechanica ended its contracts for nuclear armed missiles. We're like, this is great, fantastic. But actually, it just changed its name. <laughs> and it did that because it was on so many exclusion lists of financial institutions. So they tried to get past that. So they changed it to Leonardo Fin Mechanica. <laughs> and earlier this year, they changed it just to Leonardo. It's an Italian company, okay, you know, you can understand why it's called Leonardo. Um, so we thought we had a win, and we were excited because in our research, we were very careful. If somebody, if their contracts are over, we don't include them in our blacklist of producers anymore because we don't punish people for stuff they did if they've changed their behavior going forward. And, you know, that's, that's important. It, it helps us build relationships with some of these weapons manufacturers. Sometimes that's good. Sometimes it's not. A couple of years ago, we had Textron come to our office uh, because Textron was very angry because we kept talking about how Textron makes cluster bombs. And we do this similar research on cluster bombs. Textron was upset that we were identifying them. So they wanted us to stop, and we said, well, we'll be very happy to stop, but stop making cluster bombs. <laughs> Earlier this year, Textron announced it was stopping making cluster bombs. It's a win. <laughs> now, Textron didn't cite us. <laughs> they should have, but no, they didn't. Um, and Lockheed Martin also didn't cite us when they stopped making cluster bombs. Lockheed Martin cited the pressure 
from the financial sector. They said, we want to make ourselves available to European investors again. So they stopped making cluster bombs. Now, granted, Lockheed Martin makes a whole lot of horrible stuff. <laughs> and this is one tiny piece of the horrible stuff, but it's a tiny piece that they stopped doing because of our collective work. And it shows that we have this great deal of power that we underestimate. And I'm, I'm amazed at this one penny figure, and I, I'm so good to use that, it's awesome. Um, and think about the power of the penny, you know, when we think about the power of the purse. And we try very hard in our, when we talk about producers, when we talk about where not to invest, um, we like to give you know, people thoughts of where they could invest, but we can't provide financial advice. So we don't, because that's you know, out of my ballywick. However, I did find out that you can make more money, and I apologize to those who've heard me say this before. You know, a couple of years ago, you could make more money investing in condoms than you could investing in the French nuclear missile program. And I don't know about you, but I have preferences for what I want to see more of in the world. <laughs> so, but we can't, we can't specifically say, you know, take the money out of bombs and put them into condoms, because that's not quite how it works. But, you know, take from it what you will. Um, and with, with Don't Bang the Bomb, we look for lots of ways to help people engage in this issue. And we focus on nuclear weapons. And we do that because we're part of this international campaign to abolish nuclear weapons. We do it because um, we found nuclear weapons are, it's, people don't want to be associated with nuclear weapons at all. When we tell them that they are, it freaks them out. Um, and it's just, it's part of our, our strategy. I'll tell you something. The companies that we target are the same companies that are listed in this, that Haley talked about this morning. You know, these five companies, our efforts, whatever resonates with your folks is going to help us all. So if it helps to talk about nuclear weapons and the, co and the connection to nuclear weapons, do that. If it helps to talk about the boycott, divestment, sanctions, do that. If it helps to talk about prisons, do that. Because these companies are profiting from our willingness and complicity in their inhumane actions. But we provide a lot of, or try to do our best, to provide lots of ways and for people to engage. And so we talk about how individuals can do things. And in addition to what we heard you know, about the different things that Richard was talking about before, I wanted to throw a couple of other things out there um, that I like very much. One is to just ask the question. I love it when people come to me and say, I went into my local bank branch and I just asked them, and the bank freaks out because they go, oh my god, this client with you know, their $212 is asking me these really hard questions about what the bank is doing. And it goes up the chain, and that's really helpful. Ask questions. Um, and then I have a, a personal preference for selfies and taking selfies in certain moments and using cool hashtags. I like the divest for more hashtag, and I encourage people to take selfies at ATMs. Point to the ATM, selfie, divest from war hashtag. Simple thing. But uh, it's something that can also, if you tag the financial institution, tag your bank, gets them freaking out. Their communications department goes, what, 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 why, are we do, why are they tagging us? What, what, what do we have to do? What, what did we do? And that's, that can be a lot of fun. <laughs> you know, it can. They, you know, they ask questions. It, it leads to, um, making it a lot easier for some of the behind the scenes work that we're doing. Um, and we talk to financial institutions constantly. And we talk, to, we talk to banks, we talk to pension funds. Asset management companies don't always want to get back to us, but they will take a meeting after a few um, insistent emails or phone calls. Um, and we, we encourage them to make policies. Because we don't want to see just the action right now of divestment, we want to see that of course. But we want to make sure that no future money can be invested in these types of companies. And we make it a point to tell people when there's a good policy. When we know about it, we don't always, you know, caveat. But when we do, we, put it, we publish it. We have a hall of fame for those financial institutions that exclude the whole company. Not just project finance, but a whole company. That exclude the company regardless of where it's located. 
couple of big banks say, well, 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 no, we don't invest in nuclear weapon producers in India. France is fine, but not India. And we say, regardless of location, exclude the whole company. And it has to apply to all of their financial services. So we, we look, and it's not just the shareholding, it's not just the bond holding, but also do they do, um, do they, you know, provide other financial services to these, to these companies? Because there's quite a few out there um, that do. And so we check all of that. And then, of course, we don't, you know, tell people that they're in a hall of fame until we do an implementation check. We found some really amazing policies that just weren't implemented. <laughs> and we found great policy didn't, didn't actually divest from anything. And so that's slightly problematic, and we make sure to tell them that we find it problematic. So it's this kind of behind the scenes activity, and we try very hard to keep it quiet at the beginning, right? And then if they don't respond, if they don't engage, if they're not willing to work with us, then we take it to the streets. And that's, I think, something that's really important, the naming and shaming. Commerzbank in Germany is now working on their policy. Why? Because they had hundreds of activists outside of Commerzbank branches all through the country doing die-ins, holding up signs, saying this bank is an atomic weapons bank. And so Commerzbank was like, oh, okay, we've got to do something now. So we've been working with them to do something. We take to the press whenever the press can. Press, corporate media doesn't always want to cover war and peace issues. But the financial press is an interesting angle to go at. And we've had more luck with the financial sector press. Um, and so we take to the media whenever and where we can. And of course, social media. And one of my favorite stories is the three people in Sweden who started tagging their bank on Facebook and saying, what's your problem? How can you connect us to nuclear weapons? And that bank came back and said, oh, this is very unSwedish. We have to change this right now. And they did. And they put in a really good policy. And they worked with us to, to make sure that policy does look good. I don't have too much time to go into other things. And I know there's a, we want to have some time for Q&A. Um, and I don't want to repeat what was already said. But um, you know, I want to reinforce what Jarrett was saying about the power of following up on nuclear weapon free zone local, with local authorities. Um, sometimes we can't move things on the big way, but we can move things in the small way. And I'm personally going to walk out of here today thinking about the power of the penny <laughs> in my community. Um, and, you know, let's keep winning stuff because winning is fun. And I'll stop there. Thank you.